Hi, my name is Alan from Hawkdive and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you quick ways on how you can maximize the performance of your Valorant gameplay. You know, Valorant, the kind of Counter-Strike, but with a lot of different skills and agents. Well, anyway, there's a lot of professional players out there or want to be professional players. Hence why this video exists, because I want you to perform at your highest possible game sense and gameplay without your game actually disrupting your gameplay. So first let's talk about FPS. What is FPS? If I open a Valorant right now, which I do have open, so let us wait for it to load in. There you go, we're on Valorant. And now I want to go into the practice range. Let me just go into the um the uh the open range. Why not? Let's enter the range. And there is this thing called the FPS. Let me just allow um that real quick. And let me go back to Valorant. It'll be loading up. Uh, I do have the Valorant gameplay muted, just so you guys know. So here we go. We're now in Valorant, and as you can see, we have FPS on the top left corner of the screen. You do see decline FPS, and right now it is currently at around 400. Let me just do the trick. I would like to let you know that I am currently recording with desktop option, and you know this recording and the gameplay recording. There's a lot of things happening on my computer. So please don't blame me why I do have a uh, lower FPS than, you know, that, than you would expect from a tutorial like this. So let me just hop on to somewhere that, it, that I can stay consistent with and point it right around on the top left. So our, not, you know, our average FPS is around 100 to 300 right now. And this is already with some of the settings applied that I'm about to show you. So. How do you maximize the game performance? The first thing that we're gonna do is of course the end game settings. There's nothing new about that, and you've probably went through it already, but I want to reiterate the lower some settings are, the better. So let me hop into my settings by pressing escape, going into first general settings actually, scroll down, and right here you're gonna be seeing something called the network buffering. I would like you to put it on the maximum. What it does Actually, this is not for your FPS, but instead for your gameplay. The more buffers it has, the more, let's say, if you have an inconsistent internet connection like I do, it would still buffer those inputs that the other player placed into the game, which means it is still going to register even if your internet sucks. Like if it's delayed, it would still register on time for you to perform the necessary actions needed to, let's say, avoid a shot or flick or do something crazy. Um, but yeah, just set that to maximum. That's a tip for you. Now let's head over to video settings. This is where the FPS would come in. So right now I am playing on full screen mode, which you should, by the way, full screen makes it to be a full screen exclusive window, which means the processes would be much more willing to be allocated towards the game. So we're going to do full screen and right here, we're not, we're going to turn off the limit FPS, whatever limit FPS and menu off limit FPS and background, turn that off. Limit FPS always should be off and the maximum always, maximum always should be on zero. Now, why zero? Because if I did set something in the max FPS always, that is only going to be the maximum FPS that the game would allow you to get. So you're going to set as zero, which means we can get as high as our system can do. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, my system specs are, of course, um, mid-range, which is the RTX 2060 and the Ryzen 5 3600. So you can go and check the internet and see how much that would usually do on this game. So that's a first. And of course, the NVIDIA reflex low latency should be on on plus boost. Honestly, this might actually decrease the FPS, but bear with me. Not because the FPS is a little lower, maybe like two FPS lower, doesn't mean that it impacted your gameplay more. This NVIDIA low reflex latency technology that NVIDIA offers, if you do have a, an NVIDIA graphics card, um, it basically buffers the video frame render so that the timing is always right, which means there's going to be a lot more responsive feeling in your gameplay and it's going to be smoother. So that's, that's that. But it might use a little bit more of your CPU performance. Anyway, right here, the main three things that I, you know, four things that I want to tell you is the display mode, the resolution, 
which is always going to be should be on your base resolution unless you want to be one of those pros pros um pro players that uses stretch which means you can do 1280 by 800 or 1280 by 960 or 1680 by 1050 those are on a different aspect ratios that we might want to talk about in a different article or video but for now i'm going to be sticking with my main resolution if you are struggling however you can pull it down make sure that you are pulling it down to still a 16 by 9 um, aspect ratio such as 1600 by 900 1280 by 720 whatsoever now right here uh, we basically selected everything here i want you to look at your graphics quality the graphics quality of my game right now is on all medium, but bear with me. We're going to talk about every single one of these. So multi-threaded rendering should always be on. No matter what, should have that on. Now for this all quality right here, if you do want to have the highest performing game, you just want to set everything to low. Now vignette, that doesn't affect the gameplay. It just had, adds like a shadowy effect to the background. So we're going to put that on off. V-Sync should always be off because this is going to cap your FPS towards your monitor maximum hertz. So we don't want that. And it's going to add latency as well, but it's going to minimize screen tearing. That should be a thing for a different video. Anti-aliasing, that to none. Um, it basically smoothens out your the look of your game, especially the edges. So we're just going to do none. That's going to allow our GPU to be more free to render more frames for us and of course the anisotropic filtering would be on 1x now the improved clarity and experimental sharpening since these two allows the user to hey let me just turn it on and see the difference check the difference on the leaves turn this off it didn't do much difference but as you saw on the start uh, when i turned them on they were a lot smoother so if you do want a smoother gameplay uh not smoother but like a smoother graphics i mean turn those on honestly they don't affect the fps much but if you're really struggling just want to turn this off as you can see the last three options right here are all graphically looks for the looks and doesn't give you any competitive advantage so you just want to turn those off now with you know me doing all these putting everything on low how much fps did i gain if i look right here again look on the top right around there as you can see i am actually getting a little lower frames but Look, as I move around, I actually do have a higher FPS than what I had before when we were just walking around. And there were, there are little to no, um, they call this little to no snap lag or what I call hitching, um, on this game now because it is a lot smoother and, you know, I can just perform how I want to perform. But that is on the expense of the graphics. Don't mind my high average ping and network problem. My internet sucks. Oh, we're talking about fps anyway so you saw what the what that did by the way if you don't see your stats on the top left i forgot to tell you i'm gonna press escape go to stats and from here you just want to do text client or graph or show both on the client fps let me show bo both and um here you can see it right now on my screen very smooth gameplay even though i'm on display capture in obs recording a lot and um yeah that gave us around 500 fps now we are only hitting a little bit of 500 earlier but now we are able to maintain 500 in some space within the firing range so that is cool but there are more tips that i can show you the next one will be about the valorant dx so i would like you to exit to the desktop now and um, exit out of the game now i want you to browse wherever you installed valorant so give me a moment Currently, my Valorant is installed on C, Riot Games Valorant Live. I'm going to right-click this and open path. Or you can just do, let me see if I can do it, Valorant. And then from here, open file location. And then from there, you want to do open file location once again. And you should come up with around the same window. But this one, you got to go around back to Riot Games, go to Valorant, go to Live. And then there we go. We came to the same folder which is cool, but that's a quick trick. By the way, the application that I used there, Toggle, was everything from Void Tools. And you can get that by going to, by going to your browser and searching for everything, Void Tool. Right here. And that allows you to just search for anything. That's another tip 
not part of the increasing FPS on Valorant. Um, but it is great to know about this application. Really works wonders. Now that you're here, what I want you to do is head over to Valorant.exe, right click it, go to properties, and then go to compatibility. And you just want to go and change settings for all users. Now, what you want to do is disable full screen optimization and allow it to, you know, just press apply. Run this program as an administrator would also allow your system to allocate more resources to it without even asking much for permission, which would bypass a lot of skipping parts or bypass a lot of asking if I could do this in this program part and would just allow a lot more processing power to the game or in the CXE. For this case, it would be Valorant. Sorry, blah, blah, blah. Valorant, I mean. So uh, that is cool. And please don't exit out of this folder yet because I want you to do something else. Now, I want you to go and right click your system menu or desktop, go to display settings, scroll down. I want you to go into graphics. And from here, I want you to go and click browse. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be pasting this, um, the C Riot games, wherever Valorant.exe is, paste that in there, double click on Valorant.exe and make sure the option would be set into high performance. This is mostly useful, especially if you do have um, a lot of programs running at once, especially me, I'm streaming or whatever recording. And I want everything to be placed into the bootstrap package of Valorant, which is Valorant.exe. So I place those into high performance and then that should be good. Now, more settings that we are going to be doing is enabling game mode. So with that said, you just want to hit the start menu, go and search for game mode, and you just want to turn this on. Cool. Now that you got those things done, we now have to move on into overclocking. Now overclocking has a lot of different definition. You can overclock your CPU, your RAM, but I don't want to go too advanced. We're just going to overclock your graphics card, which is the easiest to overclock, by the way. So what I want you to do is head over into a new browser, search for MSI Afterburner. Go right here, download the program, download Afterburner, gonna download. Once it is downloaded, open it up. MSI After, oh, actually, wait, this is cool. All right, I'm sorry, I uninstalled it because I wanted to show this part. So just download it. Yeah, it's not downloaded. Okay, cool. So you want to go into the folder. Now that you have it, make sure to extract it. Now open up the folder and run the program as an administrator. So this program is called the MSI Afterburner and it allows you to um, overclock your graphics card without really dwelling or diving in too much into advanced tech such as overclocking a cpu or overclocking a ram with the timings and whatsoever this program just basically allows you to open it up add a certain amount of clock that can increase your game performance um, but just don't overdo it let me show you in reality if you just want a, a quick one uh, like a quick way of finding out your oc what i want you to do is click the overclocking scanner once you press it, press scan, it's going to auto jitter your screen or whatever. It's going to scan for the best possible setting for your graphics. But I don't have time for that in this video. Now you can also manually go and hit this four clock, memory clock, whatever. And just pray that it doesn't fry your GPU. Actually, it would never fry your GPU. It doesn't matter. It's going to crash your system. Yes, but it's not going to fry your GPU. Make sure you don't unlock any core voltage, whatever. You can mess around with the core clock. I know this system can handle around 200, but we're going to do 100 and 100 for now. I'm just going to press check. Cool. Now I don't have to do anything. If you wanted to start with Windows, just press the Windows logo and you are good. That instantly added some power to our GPU or unlocked our GPU a bit more without adding voltages or whatnot. This is not dangerous. Just don't change the fan speed, change nothing. Allow everything to be automated. Just add a few core clock and memory clock. Um, there are a lot of in-depth reviews on how to do it in YouTube, but we're not going to dive in in-depth, but I really suggest doing the automatic overclocking scanner. 
All right, after applying everything, let's open up Valorant. Let's see what it is able to do. And let's see if it is a lot more smoother than what it was earlier. Right here, I'm opening up Valorant. So this is with everything applied. This is with the MSI Afterburn. This is with Windows Game Mode on, high performance display settings, with the settings that we have applied earlier and the overclock from, um, as I said, MSI Afterburn. So let me just go into practice mode once again and go into the shooting range. Because why not? Please again, don't mind my internet. My internet sucks, but the game can be better. And that's why I have this video on for you guys. So let me just select any one. As you can see, even just in the range we're currently hitting, around 400 FPS, and that is while loading up stuff. Now if we go around out here, you can clearly see we're now hitting 400 FPS while moving and doing stuff on the screen without us being just still. Of course, I'm still able to reach my amazing. See it? Give me my 500 frames per second. We're not getting it, but we have more FPS in the range now. Why is that? Because we have allotted a lot more settings, the other stuff to work with. Actually, what I can do now is I can even increase my overclock over at the MSI Afterburner software. If I do 130, hopefully it doesn't crash my system. So let me just do 130 on both. Press check, pull, go back to Valorant. For it to load. It is giving me a lot smoother responsive frames than what I did earlier. And it is also using less performance of my machine. So if I go into my task manager right now, just head over to performance, as you can see, it is using less GPU, less CPU and memory, while also giving me much more stable frame rate and much more smoother experience. And that is basically what this guide is for. To make your FPS faster, make your FPS more, make your game more responsive, and to have you click those heads of your enemies. As you can see, the FPS that I have right now on the client um, graph, on the right, it is much more stable than what it was before. So yeah, I think this is where I'm going to end the video. Again, my name is Alan Avila from Hawkdive. Make sure to check out our articles on thehawkdive.com. And you can watch me play, I guess, on my own socials at alanavila underscore. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a nice day.